Assalamu alaikum everyone. So the topic I'm going to discuss is one of the demonstration problems in the financial managerial accounting, the business of uh, the basis of business decisions by William ha Williams Hakka Bettner and Meeks. It's a chapter 12, income and changes in retained earnings. So uh, it's a very comprehensive question. The question we are given is that there's a company in Bessie Corporation, and on December 31st, 2010, their stateholders' equity is available. We know that, that they have $10 par value, 100,000 shares outstanding, authorized, not outstanding. Authorized shares are all those shares that they can issue, but have not issued yet. So 40,000 shares are issued and outstanding. Uh, and with, along with that, we also know that the retained earning at the uh, at the end of 2010 is 1.7 million. In 20, uh, in between 2010 and 2011, uh, some transactions are affecting share, the shareholders' equity, and we are asked. So uh, these transactions are given over here. Now let's look at the task one. So in task one, we are asked to make prepare journal entries in the general journal to record the transaction affecting the stakeholders' equity that take, took place during the year. So all those transactions that affect the shareholders' equity have to be recorded. Okay, let's look at the first transaction. March 31st, a five for four stock, stock split happened. Uh, was approved by the vote of the stockholders and 10,000 new shares were distributed to the stockholders. So let's look at first look at the stock split calculation. So we have 40,000 shares outstanding. We also know that the par value of these shares was $10 per share. So what would be the par value for four shares? Because now we have a five first four stock split. They are going, the company is going asking the shareholders to deposit four shares and they will get five shares in return. For four shares, the company will have the par value of 40, five, uh, four times 10. Now, what about the five new shares that they are issuing? Uh, the par value for these five shares, new shares that will be issued after the split would be the same 40. So what we have is the par value is constant for the four shares before split and five shares after split. What changed was the number of shares. So what is the par value of one share after the split? So the power value of five shares after the split is 40. So that means the power value of one share would be 40 divided by five, which is eight. Now, if we know that the power value is eight and the final number of shares are standing. So here, what we have to do is take the original number of shares. So 40,000, now divide, all these shares by four and multiply these shares by five. So we now have 50,000 shares outstanding. An additional number of 10,000 shares were issued. The difference between 40,000 and 50,000 is 10,000 new shares were issued. So will any entry be passed when there is a stock split? If there is a stock split, no entry will be passed. This is important to note. When you have a stock split, no entry is passed. Only a memorandum is written. And that only says what happened in this year, how the things changed. So for example, in this way, uh, no general entry is passed, only a memorandum. And memorandum will say a five or st four stock split happened. And this memorandum will also be shown in the notes of the equity. So that's the only thing you have to do for the March 31st entry. On April 1st, the second entry, the company purchased 2,000 
shares of its common stock on the open market at 37 per share. Now, when the company repurchases its shares, its treasury stock, so it will be, uh, the entry will be debit treasury stock and credit cash. Cash will be going out and the company will be repurchasing its own equity. When the company repurchases its own shares, equity decreases, so it's a debit entry. Now, by what amount should I recognize treasury stock? Uh, the number of shares repurchased in this year uh, through treasury stock were 2,000. Of these 2,000 shares, the market price was 37. So 37 times 2,000, the treasury stock were actually equal to 74,000 worth. So the cash paid out would be 74,000 and we will record treasury stock worth 74,000. Okay, next entry. On July 1st, the company reissued 1,000 shares of treasury stock at 48 per share. So now what is happening is the company is re, uh, reissuing the treasury stock. The 2,000 it bought back, it's now selling those 1,000 back again in the market. Okay, let's look at some of the numbers. Number of shares sold. So we know the 1,000 shares were sold at a price per share of 48. How, however, these strategy stocks were worth 37 when you purchased them. So how much additional money did you get at the time of sale? The additional is the 48 minus 37 or $11 per share at the time of the sale. A treasury stock issued capital is equal to, uh, because now we are talking about issued capital, we have to look at the price we purchased that, 37 times 1,000. So 37 times 1,000, it's 37,000, that's issued capital. How much extra money did we get? The additional paid in capital, that's 11 times 1,000 our 11,000, the total cash received is the sum of these two or 48,000. So now I can simply say the cash received was 48,000 of which the treasury stock uh, core capital was worth 37,000 and 11,000 was additional paid in capital. Oh, okay, next part. On July 1st, the company did another transaction. Uh, 20,000 shares of pre previously unissued $8 par value common stock were issued at 47,000 per share. Previously unissued means that these shares were never issued before. So they are going into market for the first time. So number of shares sold, we know are 20,000. At price per share is 47. However, now the par value that we have calculated after the split is $8. For this $8, how much extra money are you getting per common share? So that's 47 minus eight or $39. So common stock capital issued would be eight, the par value multiplied by number of shares sold, which is 20,000. So eight times 20,000 is 160,000. Additional paid in capital for the common shares is, of 39 per share additional extra that we are receiving into 20,000 shares, which is 780,000. And that means the total cash of, is the sum of these two, or which is equal to 940,000. Now we can quickly write the entry. Debit cash, this is the amount of cash we will get. Against the sale, the common stock sold at par value is 160,000 and the additional paid in capital is 780,000.